You've got your RPG making engine of choice. You're ready to sit down and start banging out your love letter to Final Fantasy. Then you see it. The dreaded switch. Not not that switch. This one. That, no, not, not that switch either. <clears throat> this switch. But don't worry, by the end of this video, you're going to be a switch master and nobody will ever be able to use a switch against you again, unless you're into that sort of thing. Let's move on. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and this is one of a series of RPG making tutorials. Most, if not all of the information in these generic RPG making tutorials can be used in just about every engine out there. But for illustrative purposes, for this one, I'll be using Smile Game Builder. I will be using language that is generic as possible so you can follow along in your engine of choice. Let's get started. All right, every competent RPG engine out there has switches. A switch is just like your light switch on your wall. Bold of me to assume you have a wall. It can either be on or off. This is also said as being one or zero. These are the states that a switch can be in and they are the only two values that it can hold. A switch in programming is called a Boolean variable and it works the same way. They are useful because they are the smallest data type and they take up the least amount of memory. In SGB, we have access to 1000 switches. Yes, I see that it ends at 999, but it begins at zero, so you have a thousand. We can access these switches from any event that we make anywhere in the game. And so for this reason, I will call these global switches. That just means that they can be accessed from anywhere. In other words, they can be accessed globally. SGB in particular creates one local switch every time you create an event, and this local switch can only be accessed by this particular event. No other event that you ever create will ever have access to this local switch, and this event will not be able to access the local switch of any other event in the game. So what do we do with this information? Well, there's a lot that we can do with switches, but it all boils down to just two things. With switches, you can set a condition and you can make an event check to see if this condition is true. And you can make the event decide to do one thing or another based on whether or not the condition is true. So let's use an example. So in a typical RPG, you might walk up to a treasure chest and then open it, and then you'll get 50 gold. And when you walk away, even if you leave the map and come back, the chest will now be open. It won't have anything in it. You won't be able to get the gold again. This is made possible due to a local switch. There are other ways that you can perform this as well, but a local switch is really the best way to do it. So why don't we take a look at this exact event, the treasure chest, and see what's going on inside of it. For this event in SGB, you can see that we can set a condition. If we don't, this event, which is a treasure chest in this example, will be here and it will be interactable. If we set a condition, the event won't do anything until that condition is true. In fact, the event won't even appear on the screen for the player to interact with it. And on page two, here is a condition. If this condition is met, the event can execute. So for our condition, the switch local to this event must be set to zero. In other words, the switch that only this event has access to must be zero for it to be opened by the player. Switches have a default value of zero. So if you set this condition, then the player will be able to open the chest. And the player can do this over and over and over and over again because the switch will always be set to zero. This is the same thing as not setting a condition at all, which is the case in this particular example. That is, until we make one change. In the event logic, we can see the last event panel contains an instruction to change the local switch in the event from off to on. So now what happens? Well, the local switch is now turned on, and in our page two, if the local switch is on, this is the event logic that executes now when you interact with the chest. You just get a display message saying the treasure chest is already empty. That's because the condition for the event to happen and open up and give you money is no longer true. Unless we can change the local switch back to zero, this event will never happen again. It will never be able to be opened, money procured from in the inside ever again. It will now always say that the treasure chest is already empty. Now, those of you who are watching closely, you might notice that the first page has no event condition and the second page does have an event condition. Uh, events in SGB run like so. The page on the right hand side, the farthest right page is going to execute first. 
if it can. And if not, then SGB will check the next page, the one to its left, and it will attempt to execute that event's logic if the conditions are true. So for this treasure chest, now that the conditions on page two are true, this is the event logic that will execute and then the event will end. It will never reach page one. However, before you open the treasure chest, this event logic cannot trigger because the condition is not true. So it goes and checks page one, which is true. And then this event logic executes. However, when it executes, the last event command is to turn the local switch on which means, again, we'll never see that logic again in the game. And this is why you might use a local switch. If it's something that the player is intended to search or just open one time, don't use any of your valuable global switches. Just use the free local switch that comes with that event. You can do this for collectible pickups in your game, like coins or rings, and you can make the graphic appear if the condition is zero. And then upon being touched by the player, you can add one to the switch and add the player's rings or coins to their total, and then the item will now be gone off of the map. You can do this for traps as well. In a classic dungeon crawler style of game, you can place a trap, and when the player examines it or steps on it, it can trigger to damage them, and then it won't trigger again, all thanks to the switch. Other good ways to use the local switch include having an event run the first time a player enters a new area or map, such as triggering a welcome message or dialogue, or giving the player EXP if that's a mechanic in your game. Or you can set out monsters that the player can fight, and once the battle is done, they won't show back up. Alright, so when is it appropriate to use the global switches? Well, any event that does need to affect another event will use a global switch or variable. So in this dungeon level, I can't open this door until I find the button that opens it. Once I find the button, the door will open and I can go in. And a global switch is used for this. Aha! Oh, it was fake the whole time. You can use global switches in lots and lots of creative ways. If the player enters a map for the first time and you'd like for that to show up in some sort of progress meter or have an NPC comment on it later, you'd have a global switch change in response to the player entering the map. Or you'd check to see if the global switch was set to 1 before you filled in the visual representation of the progress bar, and so on. You can set switches to mark if the player has completed any sort of achievement, such as completing a specific dungeon, or if they've worn a specific type of gear before, even if they unequip it. And use that to give them unique rewards from an NPC. If you're trying to create your own battle system, global switches can help there as well, and they can be set to indicate whether or not a particular character can or has learned how to use a given item or ability, or whether they can use certain weapons or equip certain gear. If you're ambitious, you can even figure out how to use Fog of War only using local switches. Of course, if you're more patient than you are ambitious, you can just wait for me to make a video about how to do that. I hope you learned something about switches and I would love to hear your ideas down below. Check the playlist if you would like to learn more about variables or string variables or fast quest event prototyping, how to make RPG maps, and much, much more. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.